Welcome to another video. I have a crazy integral here that I was unable to integrate. I received this in an email and I think this is from some G advanced exam. But the only way you can integrate this is by just knowing a special technique, which I did not know until I ran to my friend Josh. Shout out to Josh for telling me how to do this. Well, it's actually a very crazy trick. And after doing it, I realized there's still a lot for me to learn. That's why we never stop learning. Let's get into the video. At first, I thought, well, anytime I see this and this, this is opposite this, I have to quickly check if this is a... This is an even function or an odd function because if this is an odd function, then this is going to give me just zero. But when I checked it out, it is neither even nor odd. So it was impossible for me to apply any technique to it, okay? I could not use this symmetry thing up to get a zero. So I thought of other things to do. I tried the, what do you call it? The infinite series for cosine and for this to write it in, in complex form. All those strategies just did not come in handy until Josh said to me, why don't you try to replace X with its negative and see what happens. So watch what's going to happen. We're going to do a U substitution. So we're going to say, let U be equal to the negative of X. That means that negative U is equal to X. Okay? <laughs> this is crazy because I would never have thought of this. I would have just done my plugging in and confirmed whether it was, um, it was even or odd, whether the function was even or odd. But looking at this, we know that u squared, if you square both sides, it's going to be x squared. And we know that if you take the derivative, negative du equals dx. Okay. Now we also have these boundaries. Let me just do everything. We know that when you evaluate u, by plugging in negative pi over 2 for x, you're going to end up with just pi over 2. And you plug in pi over 2, you're going to end up with negative pi over 2. So, with all of these settled, we can go back to this integral and say, let's say this guy is i, we can rewrite this i to be i is equal to the integral from, instead of us going from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 now, we're going to be going from pi over 2 to negative pi over 2 because everything is flipped. So it's going to be pi over 2, negative pi over 2. Now what's going to be the integrand? we have x squared will become u squared. And cosine x is going to become cosine negative u. Cosine negative u. You see that? And then we're going to have um, 1 plus e to the x is going to become 1 plus e to the x is negative u. And then what is our dx? dx is going to be top, ta -da -da, negative du. Okay, now see what's going to happen. I know that cosine is an even function. That means Okay. That means that Cosine negative u is the same as cosine u. I'm going to leave that there. 
I'm going to go here and say this negative du can go all the way back here, or I might as well use that negative to flip the boundary, the boundaries of integration or the limits of integration. So I'm going to say that this i could actually be written as this would be pi over 2 negative. Uh, that's too tiny. Let's Okay, and then you're going to have pi over 2, and this is going to be u squared cosine u, because cosine negative u is the same thing as cosine u, because cosine is an even function, and then this is going to become nothing new, it's just 1, let's write it this way, 1 plus 1 over e to the u du. Now, we don't want a fraction inside a fraction. So I'm going to multiply the top and bottom by e to the u so that what I have is going to be i equals, if I multiply the top by e to the u, I'm going to have e to the u, sorry, we have the integral. So we're going to have the integral from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 of e to the u, okay, times u squared, times cosine u, over, if I multiply the bottom by e to the u, I'm going to get e to the u plus 1. So it's going to be e to the u plus 1, and then here I'm going to have du. So the question is, um, what does this do for me? Well, what it does for me is that this is i, and the original equation is also i. So I can add these two i's together, and then I'm going to get 2i. And it's going to be the sum. Look, the, the limits are the same. It's just the arguments that are slightly, they look different. But I promise you, if you integrate this, you're going to get the same answer as if you integrate this. So all you have to do is, if you add the two arguments together, you're going to end up with the integral from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. If we add this to this, notice that the denominator is the same. So we don't need to worry about the denominator. It's e to the u plus 1. The numerator, this has x squared cosine x, this has e to the u times u squared cosine u. Now you might be saying, well, this is u, this is x. It doesn't matter what variable you use, remember that, okay? It doesn't matter. In fact, we may as well change the variable now so you don't get confused. So what I'm going to do is, top, 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 I am going to change this integral here. I'm going to change it to e to the x. I'm going to change this to x squared. And I'm going to change this to x. And I'm going to change this to x. It does not matter. Okay? Look, the integral of x dx is exactly the integral of u du if this goes from A to B, and this goes from A to B. Yeah, somebody will say, but you said U was negative X. Well, but we've, we've taken care of all that, okay? And we're still back to what we have. It doesn't matter now what U is. Okay, at this point, if you add the two numerators, you're going to have, watch this x squared cosine x is here and it's also here. But you notice that on top here, we're going to have, if you factor this out, it's going to be 1. And then here you're going to be plus e to the x. Hey, it is x now. We're doing x. And then our du is going to be replaced by dx. It doesn't matter. This is the best way to go about this. Now, don't forget it's because it is i. So adding these two together is still the same thing. So now, what do we have? We can cancel this out. And we have 2i is equal to the integral from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. And we have just x squared 
cosine x dx. So that means the original integral that we had here is exactly this integral. It is just that this one is twice that. So how do we integrate this? Well, we can easily integrate our answer here. We can get this answer. We have 2i will be equal to, we're going to evaluate the integral. If we integrate this, we can use the di method. I think that works. So we differentiate, we integrate. Because this is the product of a polynomial and a trig function, differentiate the polynomial, integrate the trig function. So we have x squared, we have the trig function, which is cosine x dx. If we integrate this, we're going to get sine x dx. Let me be sure that the camera is catching this. And then if we integrate one more time, well, let's do this side so we know how many times we need to integrate. If you differentiate x squared, you get 2x. Differentiate 2x, you get 2. Differentiate 2, you get 0. You stop at 0 if you're dealing with a polynomial. If we integrate sine x, we're going to get negative cosine x. If we integrate negative cosine x, we're going to get negative sine x. So what we have, we put plus, minus, plus, you just put, put alternate signs. So now, what do we have? This integral can be um, written as x squared sine x. So we have x squared sine x. If you go this way, minus times minus is plus 2x cosine x. And then we can go this way, it would be minus 2 sine x, minus 2 sine x. All evaluated from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Okay, let's see what we're going to get. Oh, okay. So that's what we get. So ultimately, we can see, I think I'm going to write my answer here. So we can see that 2i equals this. If you divide both sides by 2, you're going to end up with i equals, if you divide by 2, you're going to have pi squared over 4 minus, you divide 4 by 2, you get minus 2. And this is the answer that we're looking for. Oh, that's a terrible box, but we'll take it. Because the most important thing is that we figured out that you could do some kind of tricky integration by just doing this crazy substitution, even when the function is not even and not odd. It is weird, but it worked. Leave a comment in the comment section. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.